Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hi, I'm Chris Rozak. And I'm Sammy Van Kallenberg. And uh, this is our joint build for this year of the IT crowd. Uh, it's a bit of a niche British comedy show that we absolutely love and quote all the time. We decided to do uh, our joint project of the entire office in Miniland scale. For people who haven't seen the show, give kind of a quick overview of kind of what the show was about and some of the characters here. It's about two very, very nerdy guys who are stuck in a basement working in IT for a company who nobody seems to know what they actually do. Um, and they are, it's following them along with a woman who knows absolutely nothing about IT and is constantly getting them into trouble. Um, so there, yeah. <laughs> It's just all of the craziness that happens there. So it's, this is a fantastic build. So kind of talk about maybe where you started and, and where the, the idea came from and how this evolved. Well, we've probably watched the show at least 100 times. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a favorite of mine when it was originally on TV in like the mid to, or to or late 2010s, I think. And so um, I got Chris into it when we first started dating and we've been watching it over and over again recently because it was on Netflix for a long time. And I think it was my idea, I was like, that would be a really fun collaborative build. I was doing, I have a Lego zoo here as well and I was making stickers for whoever is um, from Chicago would know Moldorama, which is like a mold in, um, making machine where you can make little plastic toys. And so I was like, I could make a lot of stickers for this. Yeah. We could make this really accurate. So um, Chris started playing around with some of the figures because he's really talented at mini land scale. It's something he's done for his whole life. I and did a test model of Richmond in his little server room, and I kind of got his figure down, and I'm like, okay, I think this will be possible. And it kind of all stemmed from the stickers and that figure right there is what sold the deal on tried to trying to get the whole office built. So what what are some of the keys when building figures at this scale? Because you don't see a lot of builds at conventions. Obviously, kind of Legoland parks are famous for this type of a scale. What what are some of the keys and some of the parts that you use in these figures? I mean, for me in particular, I like doing mini land scale. I grew up with like the it was the DK Ultimate Lego book back in the day. Kind of inspired me to pursue mini land scale. So it's more or less trying to get the right shape down, try to get the key um, scale, and the the heads are also kind of crucial to make sure the hair is right and the little details. But otherwise, it's kind of just a really fun scale to work with, and you can cram in a lot of detail in such a little figure in such a uh, small area as well. It's fun because you can make them so blocky, you know? It's kind of the standard for mini land, so... You were asking about what parts are kind of the most important. Standard Lego brick, obviously, <laughs> is the most important because that's what makes Mini Land Mini Land. And hinges. Hinges is a, hinges is a crucial thing because you get a lot of arm posts with the hinges and various little brackets and angles. Like Jen has her little like hands on her hips and all those kind of elements really kind of get that sense of movement and action poses. Yeah, more than maybe just a standard minifig where you've just got the basic arms. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know you mentioned kind of custom stickers. Take us through maybe some of those custom items and how it kind of brings to life different stuff from the show. Well, one of the really important things about the show is that they were really um, trying to include their audience quite a bit. So they, over the three or four series, were trying to ask people to send in artwork or send in references that, th that they thought were funny or things that were computer related. So it was actually really difficult to find a lot of the things because it's like some random person just made this and sent it in and you have no idea who it is. Something random off of DeviantArt or like some random tchotchke or a little like vinyl toy that some obscure maker has. So we try to include as many of those as possible. So it's a combination of that as well as um, obviously some of the classics like Space Invaders or um, things like that. And then we tried to also include some things that weren't necessarily there but were important to the show, like um, people who would know, would watch like um, ladyproblems.com when they 
accidentally told the whole world that they had um, male, ma like PMS, essentially, <laughs> or um, the heat magazines everywhere where they weren't necessarily there all the time because they're always talking about um, how Jen is this like ditzy woman in her early 20s and she knows absolutely nothing about anything. Um, and on top of all of that, too, all of the different show references that we could probably cram into here is also in the in the build as well. The fact that they convinced her for some reason that the internet was just a random black box with a red blinky light on the top, and she actually believed it, um, or that um, everything from like the pop-up windows on her computer monitor. Uh, we have the bird's nest in Moss's CD tray. The flaming fire extinguisher, uh, little things like the bucket of fried chicken. Every little reference that we tried to Comes cram in into. A real bucket, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or every little reference. Quote unquote Gen Two, which is just an answering machine. Um, or the fact that I took um, one of the is it Belleville mugs? I think it's, uh, it's Scala. Oh, Scala. I'm sorry, I took a Scala mug and put a picture of Moss's face on the bottom because people kept stealing Moss's mug, especially. Um, uh, Richmond. So if you look really carefully, you'll see a lot of tiny details that we tried to include. What, one of the most detail packed areas is kind of these shelves you have in the back. So what are some of the pieces that you use back there to capture some of those elements? Well, some of them are stickers. Um, like they have a lot of, you know, little action figures and things that obviously we couldn't include. I used a lot of like little of the micro figures, I think is what they're called, um, but it's still not the same. So I used a lot of brick and plate to, tr to and printed out like a custom sticker to try to at least emulate maybe a box that they had on the shelf. Um, I couldn't fit as much as I wanted to, but they I know that there was a computer history museum in England that donated a lot of History, historical computers. computers and stuff. So I tried to emulate some of those that were on the shelves. I think there was like a ZX89 or something yeah. like that on one of the shelves at one point. A lot of vintage cameras that are pretty simple. You know, it's just like a brick with either it's a snot brick or I use one of those like, what are they called when it goes on a minifigure and you can put like the something on their back? Your bracket with the yeah. stud on the back. <laughs> we use a lot of those in here. So. Um, or just like plate that I put a sticker on because they really liked strange German board games that no one has ever heard of or like Ticket to Ride. Um, I think they talked yeah. about a, a, quite a bit. And so I tried to throw as many of those in there where they're supposed to be. Now, throughout the build, you've got lights and then even some movement here as well. So how did you kind of incorporate that uh, in, in each room and get that all, you know, hidden in the build here? So pretty much all the lighting and all the, the mechanism for the fans and the server room are all done by me. It was a lot of um, just trial and error to make sure the server uh, blinks the way it does. If you looked at the show versus what I have here, almost all the lights, where they blink in the show, they blink in the server. Uh, the green ones are where they're supposed to be in the show. And you don't want to see the back of it. It's a very big rat's nest of <laughs> wires. And thank you to Rob at Brickstuffs for all his little connectors, all his little circuit boards. It helped a lot to really hide all the wires underneath the build as well as behind it as well. The whole underside is Technic so that we could, you know, sneak wires, wires. through the holes in the bricks and stuff and make things a lot easier, you know. It, it, pe people don't see wear. it, so uh, whatever makes it easier for the builder, and that's what we used. And obviously, a lot of this build is kind of everyday objects like furniture and chairs and that type of thing. But you've captured it really nicely here. So, kind of like we were talking about with the figures, what are some elements that you use there? How do you kind of find the the right pieces and scale for that furniture that makes it recognizable? Ooh, that's a really hard question. <laughs> um, almost. All of them are just standard brick and plate. Um, jumper plates, a lot of jumper plates. Because we want it, we we're trying to make it as accurate as physically possible. And what's unfortunate is that they change things so frequently <laughs> that we couldn't make it like completely accurate so that everybody would recognize it from every episode. So we tried pulling bits and pieces from different episodes. Um, 
I don't know how we ch how I chose my pieces necessarily. I usually just started by color. That's the easiest for me. I'm like, all right, um, Moss's desk is, you know, tan, tan, and tan and gray. So I'm like, what parts do we have in tan and gray that might be able to work? And that's just, I know someone else might have a, a different strategy or build a mock-up of it in random colors and then order them. Um, I know that's some, how others have worked. But um, I thought it would be a fun challenge to see what we had and how I could make that from there. One really nice feature that I like here is the rug, and it's kind of just half offset almost there, kind of above the floor, yep. which is really nice. Yeah, that was my little contribution to the furniture, because Sammy did most of the, the, the furniture and everything. I was trying to figure out how to make that rug kind of look a little bit three-dimensional, so it is slightly offset by like a quarter of a tile higher than everything, so to give it that dimension and not have it just a flat floor. That works really well. And another eye-catching part of the build is the sign itself and obviously kind of gives people an idea when they first walk up of what they're looking at here. And I like how you use like a lot of cheese slubs for that lettering, really get a lot of the detail in the letters. Oh, thank you. I We were originally looking at, what was it, something in Miniland scale that they were doing lettering with? Yeah, the, the, the plate and brick method were like the plates on the side and the classic kind of... The classical uh, Lego lettering style. Yeah, and I was like, that would be nice, but I have a feeling that there's a way that we could do this just a little bit better. And then I'm like, wait a minute, we just have a ton of these orange cheese slopes. I think I could make this work. And luckily, we also had a ton of orange one by two brick, so I was able to build it into the black sort of background and then hold the cheese slopes on from there. And it actually came together much easier than I thought. Um, it took a while to kind of, you know, playing around with it and trying to figure out what worked and what didn't, but... It turned out perfectly, that old computer, that computer font, like the real uh, show's logo. Yeah, it's so, in, like, ingrained in the show, like, the whole front title sequence ends with this logo, and it's so quintessential, like, 80s computer, that I'm like, we have to include this. It feels so important to the show. And with a build like this, it's always really fun to kind of see public reactions to it. So what what have people kind of first noticed? What has their reactions been like when they're walking up to the build? Oh, they've been great. Absolutely. P people love it. And we were hoping that a lot of people would get the show. And you just hear, oh, I see this reference. Oh, I see the fire extinguisher. I see like all the characters and all the little things that we put in here. It's just, it's so good to see that there's a lot of other nerds around like us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the first thing that people have really noticed and been excited about. They're like, the fire extinguisher's there, it's on fire, and it says made in Britain. <laughs> it's and so like we get a lot of that, and yeah. then that's been a really great way to engage with people because they get so excited that they start pointing stuff out and like, did you see that there's a goth to boss sticker in there? <laughs> or yeah, it has the shoes, uh, the <laughs> internet on the shelf, every little thing that we put in here. People are like, oh my God, I remember that from the show, and they love it. That's so much fun, and thank you so much for your attention to detail and working on this and bringing it out to the show here. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say, you know, thank you for all the work here. I appreciate it. Thank okay. you for loving it. Yeah, and thanks for talking to us. Yeah. This, you know, that's half of building Lego is talking in, about it and sharing it with other people and kind of just gushing over your shared love of being a nerd, you know? And um, they were kind of like my first pop culture, like, foray into like, oh, I'm a nerd, and that's okay. I can still be cool and be funny, and, and so I think a lot of other people feel the same way.